Okay, um, so good evening everyone and thank you all for joining in today. Uh, we are very happy to have uh, Shrishti Manipal Institute of Art, Design and Technology, Bangalore um, here and we've got all the heads of this institution really of, of the departments who are here to represent uh, the school. Now, now we're very happy to have uh, uh, Professor Ramesh Kalkur. Uh, he's he's uh, here representing. Of course, he's here along with uh, with the others, Professor Michael Joseph, uh, Professor Nirith Alva, and Professor Mahesh Bhatt. All right. So thanks, uh, professors, for for uh, joining in and and uh, obliging to come here and meet with our students. Um, so firstly, all the students here, if you all have questions, please type a question in the questions pane so that we could uh, we could uh, ask those questions at a later stage. We'll first be starting off with a presentation by the team and then we will uh, get on to the Q&A session. All right. Um, so as of now, I just want to reconfirm if everyone can hear me. So if you can hear me in the chat box, just type in yes. OK, so I'm getting yeses, so that means I can be heard. So fantastic. Um, right over to the team. Uh, Professor Mahesh, would you be starting? Yeah, I, I don't think uh, you guys can see me because I have a there's an issue on the, on the camera. Uh, you, uh, but I'll continue nonetheless. Uh, so, uh, good afternoon, everybody. I'm uh, Mahesh, but in fact, uh, at Srishti, we don't have these titles. We are all faculty members, so I'm just Mahesh. And most of our students uh, kind of, uh, you know, call us by our first name. So, uh, you know, uh, that's the Srishti culture. So, I'm Mahesh, Mahesh Bhatt, of course, and. Uh, um, I am a faculty member. I've been working at Sushti for about five years now, and uh, um, you know I'm a photographer, filmmaker, publisher, and I also manage Sushti's uh, Sushti Manipal's, um, you know the the social media accounts, Instagram, and uh, Facebook uh, and Twitter accounts. Now this evening, I have my colleagues are here with me. Uh, Ramesh Kalkur. Ramesh is. Uh, Dean for the Foundation Studies and all the uh, students at Srishti, the under, undergraduate students who uh, go through, uh, who join the four-year program, uh, the professional program, go through him uh, in a way, so to speak, uh, through his door. Uh, uh, he manages the foundation program. Uh, we have Michael Joseph, who is a filmmaker, uh, and he manages the three-year vocational program and all the people you know generally uh, will uh, go through his portals uh, the uh, the students who join a three year vocational program i have my colleague uh, niret alwa here too niret uh, uh, is a very well known tv television uh, uh, and filmmaker you know he has done many many programs over his long career distinguished career and he has been he and i joined sushi at the same time uh, about five years ago and uh, you know we have uh, been teaching a whole lot of uh, or facilitating a lot of uh, courses at Srishti. Uh, Niret has been teaching at both uh, a professional program and the vocational program. Uh, I have been teaching in the in the UG undergraduate professional and um, a postgraduate programs. So that's the uh, a bit of a, a, a introduction to us, and I think our I'm not too sure if our colleague Seema Vinod is here. She is uh, she is not going to be speaking, but she's the co she's coordinates uh, our uh, admissions, and uh, you know uh, will be at the help desk in the in the few weeks or months to come, and uh, that that's who we are. Uh, shall we start, Ramesh? Yeah. Okay, uh, the first slide that you see, uh, you know, uh, is kind of talks about the, the culture at, at Srishti Manipal. Uh, you know, we are, we encourage this, our learners, uh, our aspiring practitioners, as we call our students, to be collaborative uh, over being competitive. It is not, uh, you know, 
that I have to be better than the other, but it's more like we all get together and, and learn because the world is collaborative. And as we go forward, the world is collaborative. That's what we keep telling in our studios as well. And it is inclusive. We would like to uh, our uh, uh, and aspiring practitioners you know, are exposed to the world. Uh, you know, we shun the uh, word like it's the, the world of college and the outside world. They 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 kind of mingle together. You know, and uh, it is our classes, uh, the studios as we call them, are quite participatory. It is not that a, there is a facilitator, a teacher standing there and telling you what to do, but more like the the uh, the learning to emerge from the class led by the facilitator. You know, facilitator's experience and uh, uh, you know helps the learners to learn. You know, and diversity or homogeneity, and the two points are kind of similar. Personalization or one size fits all, in the sense, you know, if you have joined, say, for example, a, a visual communications program, uh, you can, you know, learn. Uh, you can opt for stu stu uh, 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 studios from variety of different programs, which are, uh, uh, you know, you will know more about it later. Uh, have, therefore, it is not just that uh, specialization that you're learning, uh, but a whole lot of other things that you can choose from. Therefore, what I'm trying to say is, this, say two students who have joined the same program may opt for two or three, several different studios in their second and third year. Uh, and therefore, uh, you know, they will get an opportunity it is more like personalized learning you know rather than one size fits all so this is the kind of guiding principles that we have at srishti uh, and moving on to the next uh, slide it, it kind of uh, tells us the different kinds of courses that we offer in the undergraduate level we have the bachelor of vocation which is a three year program bachelor of fine arts four years program and bachelor of design four years program in postgraduate level we have masters of fine art that's mfa it's a two-year program you have masters of design master of design it's two-year program master of planning gain a two-year program and master of arts that's ma a two-year program at the doctoral level you have the ma phd that's five years in the sense somebody uh, might join Sushti manipal for a two-year master of arts program and then after that go on to do a phd a doctoral program so it's a five there's a five-year option and then you have phd program in art and design which is a three-year program so uh these this is the gamut a wide array of uh, various courses that we offer uh so that's uh, in a nutshell in, a, in an overarching view who we are uh now i will hand over to ramesh and mike uh, to talk to us about in detail about the professional and the technical program that we have the vocational program that we have <clears throat> yeah thanks Mahesh um, for a great introduction yeah I mean that's a bigger picture of what we do and uh, how we collaborate how we work together whether it's three-year program whether it's four-year program or whether it's master's or PhD program. There are a lot of master's program students sometimes do collaborate with undergrad students because it's a, it, it, the, the way we build uh, our uh, courses or units, we call them, are such that they kind of bump into each other in a way and they work, they end up kind of working with each other. Um, obviously, after the class hours, they are they will be working with each other most of the time. Um, but in the in the in the way we structured uh, things, there are ways in which they uh, they come together. Anyway, largely I was telling beyond that uh, myself and Mike uh, Joseph will be talking about undergrad. But is if if there are any postgrad students, Dion mentioned that they might be one or two we can address you uh, later or uh, address your questions later um, so we will come back to that so largely yeah in within undergrad we should we do mention everywhere that we do offer 
two different kind of program one is four year and one is three years it is designed in such a way that it kind of caters to different kind of learners um that's the main idea of having four year and three year is to it's more about you know what kind of learner how one learns and we should kind of plan and structure our uh, our courses in such a way that we cater to different kind of learner who knows maybe we might come up with another third one also uh, in the near future so that's um, so i start off with uh, so you should uh, understand that whenever i speak uh, i'm talking about four year program whenever mike uh, speaks he's talking about the three year program so that's why we also said okay four of us will pitch in here and there so that you also understand the difference between the programming so in a four year program yes obviously year one is foundation studies program it's not discipline uh, specific uh, uh, program foundation itself is that it's uh, you do kind of really wide array of things it's not it's not skill based also uh, most of the time classical foundation uh, programs are about learning certain skills which will be used in second and third year here we kind of uh, designed it in such a way that you get a wide variety of skills and also understanding or broader understanding of art and design practice itself um, in fact it's uh, context based and uh, it's um, when i say context based we it, we bring in certain themes to the class and then we deliver uh, units around that so that's uh, year one where by the end of it you would have felt that okay it was one roller coaster ride and i kind of learned bits and pieces of many things but i don't know where i am that's good uh, to be in that position because uh, then you are that means that you kind of opened up yourself to uh, other kinds of learning in your second and third year is uh, largely uh, what we call studio based program where uh, mahesh nicely introduced you that you can it is called choice based program where even though you are a part of a particular major you would have applied to a film or animation or as i said visual communication uh, while you are part of that you can also opt for some of the courses offered by other disciplines that's why it's called choice based program so you kind of continue what you did in foundation in the sense that you keep broadening your your idea of art and design keep broadening your skill base uh, uh, um, i mean various by learning various skills of other disciplines and by the time you come to fourth year you would have gathered quite a bit in your bag right and then you do in your fourth year semester 1 you do entire semester 1 you do one project and entire semester 2 you do another project it's both are offered by faculty who are who will be your mentors in that project there will be 8 to 10 students or maybe 15 students in a project who may not be from a particular discipline they might be out of 10 to or let's say 12 students four might be from a film and two might be depending on the nature of the project two might be from uh, information art and design two might be from Uh, digital media art depend as i said that it, depending on nature of the project you will see a combination of students so project itself is interdisciplinary and project brief is given idea about the project is given and mentor will will help you through the project and it's not a it's not a project you go out and do it this keep this in mind because it's quite different from b walk where you 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 do a project in a completely different way for a for a particular reason so that's the that's the four year how it pans out year one foundation two years of studio program where you do lots of uh, different kinds of learning from your major and many of your minors and then year four is project one and project two for the two semesters so semester per se we have two semesters semester one maybe this year because of pandemic we start in september and then go on till january and in january we have four weeks of interim uh, again this interim keep this in mind when it comes to be walk three year program 
the way that structured is a bit different from the way we structured. Here we do uh, tend to go out again this year. We did it a little bit four or five days of uh, trips are not too far away from Bangalore. Uh, hopefully next year we will be able to do uh, these longer trips and it's called environmental exposure. That's four weeks. That's not a separate semester that actually connected to second semester, but it's a it's a kind of elective program. It's not again connected to particular discipline or the way we run the semester. It's slightly different from it's a four week block within the within the semester. There are cycles. We'll come to that later. As I said, the four year program is navigation based and we follow credit system. Roughly it's 30 hours per one credit. Then it becomes like one week, one credit roughly. Uh, so we end up covering 40 credits uh, in a professional program. Um, we kind of follow there is a set of capabilities and then uh, that is what becomes our benchmark to say, OK, we, this is the exit criteria for people to move from year one to two and two to three and three to four. So it is uh, I mean, it is a creative practice where criticality and reflectiveness is very important and that is done through each and every unit. So basically when I said 40 credit each say if you do a course that might be three credit that course is assessed like that in, a, in order to uh, earn 40 credits you might end up doing around 15 courses and every course is is assessed. So every course you get a grade. Uh, so that's how you if you if you kind of clear successfully complete that particular course you get that credit if you fail that course you don't get that credit so that's that's the way credit uh, system works um yeah disciplinary competence is built through various uh, units but not in the name of that as i said so because of it's a choice based navigation over the at least years and then interdisciplinary project in fourth year fourth year so competencies of discipline you kind of there's a lot of responsibility on you to build your own because you are choosing your own courses now i will hand over to mike to talk about a three-year program and then i'll come back uh, again to the fourth year yeah so a uh, very good afternoon to everybody um so I basically coordinate the undergraduate skill-based vocational program, uh, which is a three-year program at the undergraduate level. And I think I'd like to, first of all, try and um, sort of characterize what, are the, what is the uniqueness of this program. First of all, it is when you see these words, skill and vocation, they are usually, especially in India, uh, they have a certain connotation and a certain baggage which don't really uh, sound well with what actually these words mean. So, we definitely are a skill-based vocational program, but traditionally, if you look into in India, the skill-based programs in India have mostly, you know, if I say vocation or skill, I think the first two words that would come to your mind would probably be the ITI or the Polytechnic. And definitely that type of education at a certain historical point, you know, after we got our independence and we needed to develop in a particular way and there was a need for industrial development, definitely we needed that type of education to try and develop uh, uh, into the industrialized age. Uh, and therefore those programs at that time are completely relevant. However, Today, the notion of skill is much more complex. Any skill that you have today, especially within the digital realm, 
automatically is also a choice of technology of sustainability of appropriate technology of uh, an aesthetic within the skill itself so the definition of skill today is very different it is not charlie chaplin on the conveyor belt spanner side the only thing you do is just and wait for the next nut again two times next nut two times till i don't know if you've seen that lovely film called modern times i think it was playing on the television a few days back when i was watching uh, a very scathing remark on the whole notion of industrialization and the alienation of the worker but today skill is not that skill is much more than that and i think the the usp of the skill program in srishti is the fact that we are just not trying to give out empty uh, you know it's not just an empty skill based program and we are not training you to just be a technician who will handle a machine most of the times the technician didn't even know what they were building they just knew that they had to do this if they had to do that twice every 2 minutes they would do it you know but here we are trying to build a person and in that sense you know the the characteristics that mahesh outlined in the beginning of this talk is what binds us both programs in srishti because that is a larger vision of the institution and within that there is a skill based program but it is a very humane skill based program where we are interested in definitely creating highly skilled competent proficient professionals but who are people not just technicians so this is what differentiates the skill program at srishti compared to any other skill program anywhere in india you know because we have at at an institutional level itself there is a a, a sort of a, a a drive to address these larger issues of inclusiveness of sustainability of you know trying to understand the wicked problems that we are confronted with and to make our art and design relevant to the society there is a social responsibility that you take on when you choose to be an artist or a designer you know in different ways an artist is in in a much more uh, ephemeral way but definitely art is important otherwise art would not be existing for millions of years it's not just a simple self indulgent activity it has a certain social need and it is it is uh, you know i would say it is instrumental in the well being of a community so to design it definitely a large part of design is about trying to make this world a much more uh, you know a much more um, how do i say it I, i mean in these times it is hard to talk even of uh, a world that is uh, calm and you know uh, responsible so it's a three year program unlike the uh, professional program which is very navigational and exploratory and transdisciplinary and they're connecting dots between different uh, disciplines and that's a way of thinking and if that suits the way you think you should definitely choose that program the professional program from day 1 we choose we have six programs if you choose filmmaking from day 1 we get down to filmmaking so our foundation program within the three year program is within the discipline whereas the foundation program in the four year program is a little more wider it it looks at art and design in a holistic way whereas here we look at it 
at from the angle of the discipline that you choose the course that you choose but we start from the fundamentals okay another important characteristic of the three year program is the way in which you learn and that's why what ramesh was saying it suits different types of learners it's not about one being better than the other it's about who you are and what your disposition is so if you choose to learn in a particular way if you choose to learn in a very focused and a very straightforward way then maybe the three year program is a better place for you if you choose to learn like that then maybe the professional program is a better space for you so it really depends on how people learn and it is amazing that people learn in such diverse ways you know each person learns and comprehends the world around him in such diverse ways now i was getting to another unique part of the program and that is the fact that the way it is taught or the learning environment and the three year program is rooted in what we call a work based learning approach which means that a substantial amount of your learning at srishti in that three years will be in the real world of industry so we are a constantly liaisoning with the outside world with industry to try and create some sort of relationship between higher education and the world of work and as you know this is a quintessential problem that the in most at least in the professional programs the world of the educational institution and the world the world of work are somewhat you know somewhat aligned but you must have always probably come across that person in canara bank or syndicate bank who probably has a phd in physics you know a person who loved physics but now who sits and counts notes as a cashier it's 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 really tragic to see that so this disconnect has always been there in higher education that what i learn in college i don't i don't use in my in my, my in my working life and in the three year program we are trying to sort of minimize that disconnect definitely the world of education is very different from the world of industry but how can we transit the learner from the world uh, from the educational institute or the academy into the real world when i passed out of the film institute 35 years back it was traumatic let me tell you because i was living in an institution which is an oasis you know in pune i was living with a world of cinema with filmmakers i never knew but because there was the film archive there i had access to films from bolivia to poland to you name it a whole body of work which i didn't even know real uh, didn't even know that existed and that was actually cinema but when i walked out from those you know from that campus the world outside was totally different and it took me nearly 2 to 3 years to come to terms with the real world we are addressing that in the 3 year program and we're doing that by situating the learner in the real industry so in each year we have what we call uh linkages so in the first year you have an industry exposure you go out you visit a space you might go to a studio in bombay or you might go to a printing press in hyderabad you're not very skilled you've just done 6 6 months of work you you're not very proficient in your craft but just the act of observation and going to the real workspace is a huge learning in the second year you apprentice you apprentice with a master designer and you spend 12 weeks working with him or her in the third year your final capstone project or your final thesis project is also situated in industry and it is a real world it is actually being done for a client by a company similarly to try and create this relationship we go out 
these are three instances of the student going out we also have the industry in the classroom so a project in the three-year program is a project that mimics the workspace and we run it the faculty are not actually teaching in that project space they are acting as a project lead and driving the whole team the way they would in an actual real world situation so we mimic the workspace within the academy we bring in industry to even wet our syllabus you know all the syllabuses are vetted by the sector skill councils and the six courses that we run come under three the media and entertainment sector skill council the furnishings sector skill council and the ites the uh, uh, information technology enabled services sector skill council so we have got a pulse on what's happening outside and we're trying to make whatever we do within the institution relevant to the the real world outside and that's also happening in the four-year program but in a very different way and in a very different mode of instruction so quickly to go through these things uh, they're not really very important semesters there are six to a year three years the seminar is a very similar space uh, which punctuates the two semesters in a year we call it unblock and that is also a time when we try to bring industry into the academy and uh, we run it for four weeks within each course there are further specializations or pathways not specializations pathways so say if you take graphic art and design the you could choose to be going down and this illustration pathway or a graphic design pathway credits are 60 credits a year types of credits core and general studies the general studies is also important the core so, so these are places where it becomes a more whole holistic sort of an education uh, language is taught not in terms of shakespeare but in terms of how do you communicate in the real in in the workspace uh, there are other sort of general education uh, components like the elective where we try to bring in a more heuristic understanding of the world and uh, it is a good place to create context for the learning okay and we basically run the program in terms of performance criteria so it's a performance based assessment system where we are looking at can you do this 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 and this we're not bothered if you can talk about it you need to be able to do it and there is a huge emphasis on making these are the ways in which we assess and yeah would you like to take the next slide yeah thanks mike uh, i mean i think i covered uh, uh, I think Mike gave a real good idea of what the three year and uh, I had given you some of these already. I mean, I, I said four years, eight semester and first year is uh, foundation studies program. And I talked about navigation. I talked about core and elective core become your whatever major. So whatever you applying or joining, uh, say if you join film in four year program or digital media art in a four year program or creative writing in a four year program that is your major and it's not one major and one minor there are in four year program it's one major but you can choose courses from others so it can be one minor or several minors and one thing if i forget later that one thing you can do when you are applying you can apply up to i think four courses that can go across be walk and be this and bfa so you can apply to say let's say one course in bachelor of design that might be uh, say creative writing uh, if you are interested so you need to look at the courses and what are the core uh, aspects of these courses so there's a little bit of going through our website reading has to happen apart from our q a and our presentation in order to choose your courses while you are applying 
So if you apply to creative writing in, let's say that is under Bachelor of Fine Art actually, and if you apply to uh, Industrial Art and Design, which is under Bachelor of Design, you can also apply to filmmaking or any other course, interior design build or uh, user interface and uh, interaction engineering from BWOC. So you can apply across BDES, BFA and BWOC up to I think four courses or you can apply to four within BWOC or within B BFA or within BDES. So yes, your application charges increases every time you add a course. Uh, and your BDES and BFA will have one entrance test, will come to entrance test later and BWOC, BWOC entrance test is different. So if you applied across BWOC and BDES um, or BFA, you will have two entrance tests, tests to be uh, completed. Uh, otherwise, we, if you apply to four courses within BDES or BFA, it's one or within BWOC, it's one test. So we'll come to the test later. So I will already Ramesh, explain for Ramesh. Sorry, yeah. Sorry, I just I thought I'll just clarify for everybody uh, because we're yeah. using the words. So just uh, remember the first slide that Maya showed, and he showed you undergraduate, yeah. postgraduate, doctoral. So there are different levels, okay, and then within each level so you ug is one level pg is one level doctoral is one level in ug there are in that level there are two programs the professional program and the skill based vocational program in each of these programs there are courses so just remember that that is the schematic sort of diagram uh, if you're getting confused sorry Ramesh, just thought I'd clear no, that. That's fine. Thanks a lot. So most of the aspect of this slide, I since I've covered, I think I'll go to the next one, which is again back to Mike. <laughs> you also might have covered it, but anyway, briefly. This is like, this is like playing tennis now. Just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, French <laughs> Open. Okay, the ball's in my court now. Okay. Yeah, I think we've we've already talked about this. And yeah, the, in terms of structure, both in both the courses, there are different types of courses because if you do, you know, we have very consciously structured the semester in a very intricate way. First of all, we synchronize the professional program with the vocational program so that uh, when we change, uh, we can also move around faculty. So faculty are constantly moving around. So Niret might be teaching in the vocational program this semester or this cycle. A cycle is five weeks. A semester is about 15 weeks. So in one cycle, Niret might be with the vocational program. And then in the next cycle, he might be with the postgraduate program. So we get, so you get a variety of faculty teaching across. And I must say, we are quite an eclectic community. And also, because the types of courses keep changing, the rhythmic pattern of your learning is not the same. So it's not the same old grind of get up at nine, go do this lecture for three hours, practical for one hour. Again, here what we do is within the five, uh, within the week itself, there are variations of a general, pro, uh, like uh, maybe a general studies. Uh, something in the evening, maybe football or music in the evening, and a studio for two days, uh, uh, and that creates a certain variation. So it takes away this sort of uh, staccato sort of nature of learning because the rhythmic pattern of these types of courses are very different. And of course, the capstone project. So here are the, these are the types that we have, you know, which. Uh, uh, are very different and therefore you engage differently and therefore it feels different. Hello, uh, the Capstone meeting, project can is, we just reverse the car please? Is, I'm in a meeting. The, car? Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, the Capstone project is the final project that uh, is done in the sixth semester of the three-year program. Uh, similarly in the four-year program also you have 
what do you, we call it a thesis project huh? ah thesis project yeah yeah that's like uh, your final project before you graduate yeah so should i move to the next slide so you uh, you all yeah. got an understanding of the structure of three year four year program the idea behind three and four year program just going through the list of uh, courses offered under this is under four year program there is business service and system design we call it bssd creative and applied computation people who are interested in coding and computation human centered interactivity uh, interaction design those are keywords for that particular course uh, in the first one business service system design it's about uh, designing uh, an entire system or service uh, like transportation is a system garbage collection maybe is a system or it also might be a service so at what level you would like to kind of look at the uh, look at anything offered uh, like service offered or system configured and how do we kind of be how do we uh, uh, how do we design that particular system or a service uh, next coming uh, next week is creative education it's looking at the education itself as a as a field of study and looking at how do we kind of make that a better uh, make it better so human centered design which has got some connection with creative and applied computation uh, but maybe if we're creative and applied computation is more into coding whereas human centered design looks at the interface and uh, interaction design with uh, less of a coding aspect of it industrial art and design practices houses textile and product design um, it's an old uh, kind of uh, design field industrial arts um, so uh, we kind of put the both textile and it doesn't mean that anyone who joins have to do both so some who are interested in textile would join industrial art and design practice but they make uh, uh, offer courses offered by textile design department and similarly people who are interested in product design will join the same course but they offer courses offered by product design information arts and information design practices which uh, i mean you should go through website for this particular course as well because it has got a very distinct uh, flavor to it in terms of the way it's configured around sustainability uh, natural resources, nature, human connections. Those are the, again, key words for information, IDP, information arts and information design practice. But it also kind of works around uh, some aspects of visual communication. It is, at the end of the day, it's a com it is communicating certain uh, larger issues of sustainability, nature, and, uh, and, and, uh, human animal human nature interaction those stuff so it it is kind of pivoted around that um but at the same time it is about how do you communicate this yeah uh that's information arts and information design public space design is a broader idea of the space design or what you call interior design uh, it's very different from interior design and build there are parallel in terms of courses between BWOC and the professional program. But public space design, uh, even though it kind of considers various aspects of uh, designing a space, which is which involves uh, looking at material, looking at light, looking at uh, air and sound. Those are the main aspects of really designing a space. But it also looks at it in a broader sense rather than just looking at designing a room or a restaurant it, it's also designing the public spaces such as uh, such as maybe institutions or railway stations or maybe any public space i mean hospitals and things like that where uh, it is a, a common space uh, there is a there is really a, a heightened need for uh, that kind of a designer in the growing economy now and visual communication strategic branding it is uh, starts from 
logo to layout and print and then it also goes to the screen based communication uh, and those are all under bachelor of design and a bachelor of fine arts you have uh, contemporary art practice which is which we haven't divided uh, again in a classical uh, fine art course uh, that's divided into painting sculpture and printmaking but here it's medium it's not medium specific in that sense it's more about how do you think as an artist creative writing comes under bachelor of fine art it kind of gets into the again the same realm the medium is different compared to contemporary art practice here writing becomes your medium and you can use writing as an expression you can use writing as a, as something that uh, may be used in advertising agencies or you might end up being a, a creative writer digital media art uh, is in a way animation an old name for it but here there there are other aspects of animation which is storytelling special effects everything kind of put uh, uh, is put under digital media arts film self explanatory so those are the uh, 12 uh, courses that we offer under four year program uh my maybe need yeah. to explain a bit about each one of them here yeah our basket is not so big because we are the new kid on the block and uh, we just run six programs basically uh six courses should i say not program sorry i myself am mixing it up uh the first is creative manufacturing which is a very interesting course because um unlike traditional product design which looks at large scale production here we are looking at handmade uh or the artisan community and we are looking at uh, sort of indigenous ways of uh, manufacturing and we're looking primarily at the art uh, at the craft community and how within that very rich tradition especially in a country like india across different mediums and uh, forms from wood to cloth to uh, sisal to anything um how does how do we how do we try to re imagine the the craft traditions within the context of the modern world and bring it into a, a market economy without sacrificing or uh, you know exploiting the the artisan community and in that the entrepreneurial spirit of organizing craft communities also becomes an instrumental part of the course so there is a huge emphasis on the notions of entrepreneurship and starting something at a grassroots level and to mobilize uh, the the artisan community the interior design and build uh, there are many courses with a which offer interior design i mean many institutions that offer interior design but it's not very common to see this and build so traditionally what happens is that the interior designer would usually design and then he would hand over this design to a person who would build or manufacture or who would put it up so the whole production process was not within the hand of the designer here in this course it's not just an interior design course but it is also uh, the the whole thing of not not having to go to a contractor and give your design for him or her to build but rather to be able to do it yourself which would mean that you understand materials and uh, you know other processes uh, in terms of uh, production the user interface and interaction engineering uh, course is again looking at the interface and is become a very huge part of our lives not only because of the the pandemic that has hit us but by and large because of the digital revolution that has uh, bombarded us that we are constantly uh, interacting with this world through a screen and we played the
it really affects behavior and affects the way you perceive the world. The graphic art and design program uh, is what it is. It has two pathways. As I said earlier, one is illustration and the other is graphic design. Uh, I just forgot to mention that in the creative manufacturing course, we also have two pathways. One is products and accessories, and the second is textiles and apparels. And then I come to the fifth course, which is di digital media production. Uh, this year, we are offering only the VFX stream. Otherwise, uh, we might be opening it up next year to animation and game design. But this year, the applications are open only for the VFX stream, visual effects which today has become a very important part of the media and entertainment industry, uh, more so because of the way in which the image can be manipulated within the digital realm, which was not a possibility when we were working with celluloid. Or we did, you know, manipulate, but it was a very tedious and very hard process. Today, with digital image making, it has the, the manipulation of the image is so huge, not only within the realm of the animated and the fantastical, but also within the real the real world, you know. So, so many, um, you know, it's totally changing the whole uh, production, uh, the way we produce films, and uh, has huge implications on costing and, and also other, uh, aspects of the craft like the cinematography you know there was a big uh, uh, hue and cry when I don't know which film that was I think it was Life of Pi or something when the cinematographer got the award uh, whereas most of the work there was happening on a blue uh, on a green screen and was composited so there were uh, you know there was a whole uh, discussion about what is the role of the cinematographer. Uh, and then you have digital filmmaking. Uh, this year we open only two pathways there. One is uh, direction and editing, and the second is cinematography. Uh, we, we actually plan to open two more, but definitely not this year. Uh, the other two are production design and sound recording and uh, sound design. But this year, uh, it's just going to be direction and editing, one pathway, mm -hmm. and cinematography. So although there are six courses, there are um, nine, nine sort of pathways, if you look at it, including the pathway. Yeah. Ramesha. Thanks, Mike. So I'm going to quickly go through these two slides, which are basically about the larger idea of what uh, Sushti Manipal is all about. Um, you know, and the, at the one hand, you have these courses, which are, if you compare to many other institutions, they are placed very differently, whether it's in DBOC or in BDES. We still haven't covered masters, where a number of courses offered under masters are uh, much more. I mean, if you look at really uh, some of the courses like Earth Education and uh, various other masters, MA and MDES and MFA courses, and design led innovation. So it's a really innovative way of configuring even the uh, art and design education itself. I mean, in the realm where we are, a lot of art and design colleges. Uh, you know, art colleges are still offering painting, uh, sculpture, printmaking under fine art. Whereas, um, if you look at most of the other design colleges, we are still stuck in 80s or 70s, which are textile design, product design, or animation, things like that. It's not just about the name. The, what comes with the name is the overall idea of uh, design education itself is is kind of we kind of broaden it we kind of opened up the box and then we say choice based curriculum or uh, the even any institute offering four year program three year program in the, under the same roof you don't really find 
it especially in art and design uh, so these are all kind of becomes um, becomes uh, the guiding principle to really kind of open up art and design education i mean one needs to say okay this is an interesting course for me to go to go to in Swisty. but on the other hand it's also something that what you have to look at is what is the institution is caring towards what is it, what is it doing what is it constantly why is it constantly changing in fact we are opening the application late we opened our website today and you can go I mean, we reworked on the website, uh, even though the program per se, we can kind of club some of the programs in masters, but in undergrad program per se, not changed. But the idea within the program changed and we all had to rewrite uh, looking at what we are doing now because we keep changing things. So that's where, I mean, on many of these machine statements here creating better future i mean how do i how do i plan uh, my foundation program which i'm talking where if i have to talk about uh, better future in it, so how how does it impact my planning of foundation or as um, mike just now brought it up most of the time interior design is interior design building never comes into it there, there is a whole hierarchy and class difference there Whereas when you are learning where to apply something, if you know how to apply it there and and how to design become when that interlink is built. So that that's where we, we come in. I think the innovativeness we have shown in by the BWOC program, which Mike really talked about, it's unlike many other BWOC programs, which are just okay, you run up the mill, you learn skill, whereas you we really re-looked really at how that whole skill-based program is relevant at this point in time in 2020 and how it is relevant for people who are joining now in three year down or six year, six year down the line. Similarly, in a four year program, similarly in masters, there might be courses that you, when you go to our website, you see number of courses, there might be six or eight because these are niche kind of areas even in masters uh, in masters you might see less number of students but they, they are students who are really focused and wanting to do that kind of a unit so you get to interact with them who are kind of uh, really looking at specific area of interest so that's the idea of being in this kind of a space where there are different as mike said that there are different kind of faculty who might comprise us of philosopher and mathematician designer and artist and musician and you know even physicist uh, to, to say so on the one hand you have that kind of range of faculty on the other hand you have range of students who have certain specific interests. So that's where education really is very different in, in Swisty. You must have, while I'm saying all that, you must have read this slide. So I'll go to the next one. Just to add to that, Ramesh, I think that, like what you're saying is, and I think I'd like to say is that um, yeah. what, what you're buying into is that, you know, you, you're not, you're enrolling for a program, a particular course within a particular program, but what you are buying into is a whole ecosystem of these different types of uh, faculty from lawyers to environmentalists to artists. I mean, even if you just look at four of us sitting here now, one is a fine artist, one is a filmmaker, theater person, one person is a a, a TV production and a, a, an anchor and does lots of other things, been into producing. And the fourth person is a, uh, a person who has done some beautiful still product, still photography work. You know, just, and just look at that. So, so there are other and facets. Yeah. Oh, oh, and yeah. Us. So, looking yeah, at so, uh, I mean, the, yeah, thanks. I mean, that, uh, that's where I think if you read this and then what I said uh, and what Mike is saying, that's where 
there is a there's a larger idea of education and that's what binds all of us in, in many ways um so even i mean when it comes to uh, this so there are we didn't kind of cover some of the aspects of the uh, smi where it's not just about uh, offering courses there are centers and there are labs there is something called atelier and studio where students come and work atelier and studios are the practice based or making based uh, spaces where um, students from across the board again we walk there's there's no difference between various students who are coming and working there labs and centers uh, take up projects and sometimes whether either BWOC students or BTS BFA or master students might be part of these uh, labs and center projects. There is a art science lab, which is kind of open the studio space uh, within the technology uh, tech oriented kind of work where Yashas runs this lab where many students kind of spend their weekends there and doing various kinds of things. It, it, it's an open studio where you can enter and exit anytime, but with some intention of doing doing something which is of your interest um there is a, uh, there are other practitioners like kabir uh, a project which has been happening since last uh, i think 12 years shabnam uh, shabnam has been working on that she has produced films she has um, she has got an open source uh, website so when you these are the other aspects of Swisti which is kind of in a way multi-dimensional you know? so you get to kind of uh, in in your journey you get to kind of meet these various people and be part of these different kind of i would i mean sometimes you can call it experiments or even different kind of initiatives so i would now uh, mike do you want to add anything sure yeah just the fact that uh, i don't really think one can teach anything you know but what one can do is create an environment for learning so i think that's what we strive to do and by chance we also if we can try to teach but uh, but more important is you know is how do you learn and that has become such an important part of uh, our contemporary existence because uh, because change is the only constant so we have to continuously keep learning you know, if I learn a software today, within six months yeah. it is outdated and I have to relearn. Mm -hmm. So, learning how to learn and taking responsibility and onus for your learning to become a self initiated learner, I think yeah. are the higher sort of things that one is trying to inculcate within the learning community at Srishti so that you continue. This at this point of time, three years or four years is a very long period. It's a probably a, it's, it's definitely a milestone you're you're moving from a school space into a a college sort of a space it's it's a it's a very important uh, point in your life definitely but you know i always like to think of it as being a point on a line and the line is your life so three years or four years is is like an initiation ceremony you know and it's important because it is so formative this three or four years is going to be very formative in terms of how you live and engage for the next 40 50 60 70 years god willing you know so that way the environment not only what you learn but also how you learn and where you go for to seek that knowledge within this network becomes as important as what you learn yeah Shall we go to the all right next uh, slide yeah yeah so i think um we uh, you know okay. there's some of the students need to leave so we try and wrap this yeah, up just, by six o'clock yeah. so yeah, if we very just quickly finish. yeah 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 we just yeah. got three, and four, very quickly three slides. and the uh, last speaker i've literally raced <laughs> through this because we need to leave time for questions um just to complete the 360 degree experience of what Shristi is we have an absolutely incredible wellness team. We understand that this is a transition period for, for people from school coming into a more free world. Um, the wellness team is there to counsel, to help, to guide, 
people and help them navigate through this dif uh, difficult phase of their lives, this complicated phase. We have a tutor system, which is like Harvard. So for example, I come from a film background, but I, if I'm not teaching a student directly and they need somebody whom they can come to share their problems with, share their difficulties and get some clarity on the way ahead, we have a tutor system. So every student is assigned a tutor. We have an exchange program, program with many international universities. We also have co-curricular activities. It's not just design and studies from physical sport to yoga, to dance, to theater, a whole range of them. Uh, student housing is, uh, I won't spend too much time because we you know we're already running late, but there are a huge range of options. We are moving to our own 40 acre campus in the next couple of years. Uh, it's a really beautiful place with everything built into the system. And this is what makes us different, right? The range of discipline and the forms of learning. We are wide, at the same time you're focused depending on how focused you want to get. So uh, you're constantly engaged through practic practical activity and actively in, uh, involved. It's creative, enjoyable, and it's very secure. There's no question of ragging and any kind of stuff that you associate with the crazy world outside. It's completely supported and it's a very safe space. On that, and on that note, I say thank you very much for your patience. And now we're ready to take questions. Sorry, Niret, we took some time. Uh, we had to kind of really explain what makes yeah. us different. So, um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for taking the time out uh, to to explain uh, to everyone here. A lot of questions have come in, and I'd like to uh, take this one by one. But before we start, I would just like to make sure that everyone's understood uh, the difference between the three programs. I'm launching a small poll and um, I would like students to answer this and uh, I just realized that Manmeet is there from the postgraduate so I've not included that uh, but Manmeet will, will take it uh, away. So I'll just keep this poll open for another 20 seconds and I would like uh, all of y'all to respond to this just to get an interest and in understanding what y'all are looking for <clears throat> okay another 10 seconds all right i'm going to close this poll and uh and right so looks like most of y'all are looking for a bachelor in design program which is a, a good thing now the next thing i'm going to do is um, i'm going to put in a few more things within say let's let's say the bwalk program all right um what i want to do is i just want to get an understanding as to what area y'all are looking for or which specialization interests y'all all right uh, this is for the, those who are interested in the BWOC program. Just to get some kind of an idea, we'll keep this on for another 10 seconds. Okay, I'm closing this. Uh, now I'm coming to the BFA program, the four year BFA program and just want to get an idea as to how many of y'all are interested in this particular um, set of, of programs okay another 15 seconds we'll keep this open Okay, and I'm going to close this. Now coming down to the BDES programs, um, I've I, I have limited options uh, as as in this thing. So I've put in I've broken this up into two sets. So the first set has I think five options, and the second set has two options. So um, you can select from this, and if this does not apply to you, then wait for the next poll. So again, I'm going to keep this open for 30 seconds right
Okay, another five seconds. This is going to be open before I put in the next question. All right, and this is the last question I promise you. And I launch this. Yeah, so those who are interested in this, please uh, put this in. Okay, again, another 20 seconds. I'm going to keep this open. And then we'll go into the question and answer session. All right. Last five seconds for those who've not filled this in yet. Okay, thank you. Right. Um, okay, so I'm going to start off with Richa, Richa's question. So Richa, I'm uh, pretty sure that quite a few of your questions have been answered. Um, now, now uh, from your question, which course is better suited for an animation designer and VFX game design? All right. So, so what I get from this is you're interested in animation and VFX and game design. So that area. So you are trying to figure out whether a BFA in digital media is is a better option or a BDES because both are four year programs. Uh, so so I'm, I'm sure this is a kind of because there's some overlap here. So, um, you know, could you please suggest what yeah. would be a better option? Yeah. Ramesh, your screen is on. Your mail is on the screen. Yeah. So, um, uh, actually, the the so animation and VFX. So there's a three-year program which offers a bachelor of vocation, which is called the digital media production course, which offers. VFX and within the four year program, there is only one course called the, uh, which is a BFA, which is a, which is called digital media arts program, um, which basically looks at animation and is not set to just one discipline, but is much more open. So your choice really would be between DMA in the four year program, a BFA or a DMP in the three year vocational program. All right. Does that answer the question? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, so uh, the question here is I think uh, the, the four year between the four year programs itself. Uh, but what you're saying is it's a, it's a three year program versus a four year program, right? Yeah, that's what there are two. Thinking. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Within the right. four-year program, there is only uh, uh -huh. uh, DMA if you are interested in animation. Within the right. three-year program, there is only DMP, uh, which is uh, visual effects. All right, all right. So, Rich, I hope that answers your question. Uh, as mentioned earlier, the three-year program is a very focused program, uh, and the four-year program allows you to explore a lot more. All right. Um, now, there are a few questions here regarding uh, the relationship with Manipal. All right. So, Siddharth Kulkarni is asking if there are any, now that Srishti has merged with Manipal, um, would, the, would there be any change in curriculum or, or is, does that have any effect on the way the curriculum is delivered or is, are there any other changes related to that? The relationship with Srishti does that change anything? Okay, I'll what? quickly answer. The, uh, we are we are Manipal. It's um, we are not Srishti. We are Srishti Manipal. We have become part of Manipal. Uh, we became part of Manipal last year itself. So there is nothing has been changed. So all of us are there, and we just have become. The only thing, only change, uh, as far as uh, uh, this thing is confirmed. Now the concern that the only campus will come up within a uh, year or year and a half so okay. that's the key in terms where of would, curriculum and people we are with, with the same all right where would the campus be coming up the new campus which part of bangalore it's not bangalore and we might 
uh, another six seven kilometers away from me, Alahanka, towards the airport. All right, all right. Um, now a, a few questions regarding the the placement cell or the internships, right? So how do internships and placements go about without a placement cell? The question is from Arushi and a few others as well. Mike, can I yeah. go? Yeah, you so go. as you already know that BWOC program builds its connection with the uh, industry over year one, year two, year three. And basically what the student is doing is student is building that connection with an industry or people who are working with them or working within that sector or within that industry. So they, it's almost like a, you can easily see that smooth plan, transition because you have built that connection over the year. And similarly, in a four year program, as Mike already pointed out, there is an internship. Internship is we have a large database where from which you can choose to do an internship, apply to any particular place. And there is, we don't call it internship cell, but there, there is a dean in the office, a dean of school, and her office will help you if you need help in internship. Uh, that's uh, between your third and fourth year, six to eight weeks of in internship is mandatory uh, in a four year program. And uh, then you also do a project, which is kind of sometimes maybe industry connected. We have done projects with uh, Selco, we have done projects with uh, uh, Data LX, even in four year program. And three year program, as I said, it's a, it's a, it's a smooth transition that way. So in, in terms of placement, the it's a conscious decision from Srishti Manipal to say we are not getting into placement because then industry starts kind of uh, altering maybe or dictating your curriculum. But on the other hand, if you see the opportunities built to either internship or industry connection as in DWOP or uh, or the final exhibition that we do, where we do invite industry or people industry to come in, and there the opportunity of placement gets provided, but we don't formalize that uh, reason. I already told you. And the third part of uh, placement happens when there are a lot of people do write to us saying that we need a graphic designer, or we need illustrator, or we need really someone who can uh, take care of the entire project. All those mails are forwarded to uh, our alumni network and they can directly get in touch with the, with the person or the firm which is offering an employment. So that's how it works. So without kind of making industry uh, dictating terms, we kind of made the placement per se happen, not in the name of placement. And you also need to take into account uh, the historical moment that you are studying art or entering into studying art and design. It's uh, it's a very opportune moment to to go into art and design today. You know, it is not the same as, I mean, and we can see it because the student profile also has changed within the last 25 years that we have been at Srishti. And today the creative industries is an industry uh, is, is a sector which is developing and galloping ahead so if you look at any industry sector you know if you take uh, say graphic design and media and entertainment the the projected rates of at which industry say animation is is proposed to increase the targeted increase that they're envisaging and if you map that against the professional technically qualified uh, personnel that you would have to facilitate such a growth there is a huge gap there between the number of people that are trained and the projected growth and this gap is what we call the skill gap and that means that you're at a time where the the your you know your craft and your discipline is in need because uh, the opportunities are more the jobs are more it is not you know 35 years back there were three places i could apply for for a job but today 
just in terms of the variation in terms of media artifacts itself i can work on the web i can work with an ngo i can work in bollywood i can work you know in biennale in cochin that was not there so do understand that you're entering into a, a, a an area which is uh, fast you know uh, uh, becoming much larger and it's uh, the creative industries is now it's not just a hobby or uh, extracurricular activity art and design today is a viable professional choice and therefore i don't think you need to be scared about job opportunities all right fantastic um few more questions okay yashvi raval is asking there are three rounds of um, of applications june july and august can we apply in more than one of these rounds shall i no, take it you have to apply in one round whatever no. number of courses yeah that's one that that's why i kind of before i forget i told people that you can apply to i think four courses and all the four you have to decide now we filter filter out people um so don't uh, so there is no option to apply to more than one round and you should whatever courses you want to apply you apply in any one round to reiterate right. and one once more i'm saying it in a given academic year that means in the academic year 21 22 which is the year that you are applying for you will be able to apply to srishti in one of the three rounds and in that one round you are eligible to apply for four courses i think or i don't know for a more but if you if you are applying apply for more than what you need and then choose what you want that would be my advice to you because there is no second chance so you can't apply for something not get in and then next round apply for something that you didn't apply for even that is not allowed you can apply only in one round that's all is defined in your pro i mean if you go to admission page page in the protocol it's already defined that you can't apply to more than one round and i guess uh, admissions page on the left side there will be a shishti protocol there is a separate protocol admission protocol for the professional program and there is a separate protocol for the vocational program download that and go through that carefully as much as go through the website the website is extensive so it's take your time and you know get a good cup of coffee and sit down and explore the website because there are a huge number of courses and very diverse things i think some of them probably that you probably have not even encountered yep. so do explore so i i think uh, i remember discussing last year with professor michael that uh, the best chance for a student to get in is in the first round itself right because there's a lot more seat options and then yep. subsequent rounds they'll have to select from what is left right so yeah you're right dion yeah yeah it's very important point dion um, that you know um, there are some courses which gets filled uh, in round 1 and then you will be left with few courses when you apply to round 2 and round 3 fewer courses to apply all right so fantastic uh, so richa is asking a question if i do want to do an mdes um can i can i do an mdes with a bfa qualification so that means she's considering taking bfa right now and once she graduates can she do an masters of design or mdes yeah you can very much she can all right you can it's as simple as that you if you have four year undergraduate course uh, especially in related field you can do i mean mf uh, i mean uh, mfa and F m uh, Oh, sorry, BFA and BDES is related field to MDES and MFA. All right. So uh, Arushi has a question. She's saying, after the foundation year, say year one, if someone wants to change their major, is that possible? And if if yes, then what's the process? <laughs> <laughs> These are all suspect questions. 
Um, no. So we will try and say whether in. that's possible. But at the moment, I should clearly say the change of uh, course is not possible. I think that's the reason in a four-year program uh, we made it a choice-based program. In fact, your it's mandatory to get. I would say around 40% of your uh, credit from your major. And then 20%, this is in four year program, 20% becomes your compulsory elective. Then you're left with another 40% where you can navigate, you can choose um, the units. I mean, the, the, what we call courses, but units offered by other disciplines. So since you can navigate almost 40%, I don't think you need to worry about changing it after foundation unless you are worried about certificate. Now, certificate wise, what we already told you that from BDES you can do MFA or from BFA you can do MDES. That is possible as long as you built your portfolio in that way, you've chosen your courses in that way. So if you join uh, contemporary at practice uh, under BFA, you can offer some of the courses offered by other BDES courses also. It's not a problem. So you can build your portfolio in that way and then you can apply. So, I mean, coming back to that question, I would say change of discipline is not possible of foundation. Only thing open is that you can choose courses from other disciplines. It becomes problematic because we are enrolling you with the university as a student who has entered the university at, for this particular course. And then changing that also becomes problematic. Fair enough. All right. So I hope that is clear. Um, so Meghna Shankar is asking, all right, and we got this from your answer, uh, that you can do from a, a BFA, you can do courses from B. Uh, probably B does, but from B walk. All right. Can you choose uh, courses from the B does uh, options from B walk? Is that allowed? So from the B walk, you can go into the MA, which is a two year MA. And no, Mike, they are asking uh, B walk to B does is no. Uh, no. No, are, no, 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 that's no, not what no. I'm asking. Let me just rephrase my question. Um, so so what uh, Meghna is asking is that say she's doing the B-Walk program yeah, and she wants yeah. a few subjects and, and B-Walk in interior design, right? So okay. uh, during that, she wants to select, uh, uh, once, just a second, let me rephrase and read the question again. Can we choose studios? In yes, yes. Can we choose ah. studios in interior design B-Walk while doing the four-year course in public space design? Okay, so this is uh, not something that is operational, but uh, there are, we have been thinking about it, but uh, at the moment, this is not operational. Usually, there, there are some spaces where there is a mingling, say in the holistic education, there is a mingling or uh, uh, sometimes during the, yeah, or in the interim, last year in the online apprenticeships, there was a mingling, but uh, in the formal curriculum, as of date, it is not there. But uh, given the new educational policy, uh, there might be changes, but I cannot assure you anything at this point. All right, cool. And Obisha is asking a question. Now, uh, this, the admission is going to happen in two, two rounds, right? So there's a first round of a written test and a second round of a portfolio studio test. Is that Correct. The admission. Um, no, the round is uh, within the yeah. round is different. Okay, in each round there is test one and test two. Uh, in both B walk and B test, there is test one and test two. Only difference would be what is test one in B walk or nature of test one and nature of test two in B walk will be different from B test and BFA. Test one also might comprise us of more than one paper in in uh, BFA and B test. Similarly, in B walk and test two uh, in uh, professional or four year course, 
we will send a syllabus or we will send you something to read or look at and then your question is based on that not like memorizing that but really thinking critically about that and answering that we will kind of outline this in the website in a day or day or two uh, if it is already not there or some of the aspect of this round and then test is also defined in the protocol so you should look at that so we don't look at portfolio whether it's b walk or b test or bfa we are not looking at portfolio all of them are tests and it will be uh, as of now it's defined as home based test so you are sitting and it will be it will be proctored in the sense it will be they will be looking at what you do and then what you upload so that's that's the nature of test and they will be test one and they will be test two yeah on that the reason for two days we have allocated you do test one on one day and test two on another day all right okay so uh Obisha, thanks for asking that question i think uh, uh good question there and gives a lot of clarity to everyone um so sairam is asking if an just a second Uh, yeah, Saira was asking if uh, if an aspirant applies for one specific BDES program and is not getting admission in that specific program, will the aspirant automatically be el eligible to consider other suitable pro programs in the offer, uh, alternate programs? So my guess is no, but uh, my understanding is no, but yeah, uh, yeah. would you like to answer that? It would be better that the aspirant applies for all the programs that he or she would like to be considered for. Right, right. Okay, so so Sairam, uh, please, you know, get as much clarity before you apply to the courses. Make sure you apply to the courses that you want, and try for that. And all the best uh, for that. And keep your fingers crossed. Okay, do well in the test. Uh, Meghna is asking. This From test, I must uh, say, sorry, Len, just wanted yeah. to say that the test is a very friendly test, so don't get uh, perturbed by this uh, SMEET test. It's, a, I think, uh, a very enjoy. I mean, if you li like art and design, I think it's a very enjoyable test. And there's not, I mean, you can prepare for it in the sense what you are and how you practice your art and design uh, will will be the best way to prepare it's not something you can mug up for or something like that so uh, it's not a very traumatic test i must say but it gives us certain indicators as to whether you have potential and are suitable to join Swishti. fantastic okay uh, so the next question is from meghna she's asking the vocational degree or the bwoc does it have the same standing or weightage as compared to a four-year BDES degree when it comes to higher studies uh, in India or abroad? Yeah, so the, uh, the three-year BWOC program is, uh, uh, it's a program that was constituted by UGC very recently, recently in the sense, uh, maybe about five or six years back. And it carries the same weight as any other three-year undergraduate program. Uh, there have been instances of students uh, of the three-year program who have gone on to study abroad and do their masters, either by doing a year of work and then going, or of sometimes doing a post-diploma at an institution and doing. Uh, getting the necessary eligibility. So, uh, you know, one of the things that are, is happening now is also uh, what uh, we call RPL, which is recognition of prior learning. So it's, uh, it's something that is being uh, uh, trying to be, uh, it's something that has been included in the new educational policy to create more mobility, both vertically and horizontally. Uh, for different learners and hopefully it will go into a stage where you could also probably transfer credits like you can do within the European Union. So 
there is definitely a trajectory for post-graduation study from the BWOC. One direct way would be to do an MA. Uh, there are, uh, the other way would be to do uh, a year of work or a year or two of work and then go in for your higher studies or uh, to, to do a postgraduate diploma course uh, at an institution which offers that. Yeah. Quite clear. Thank you so much. All right. Now, next question is from Manmeet Singh. Manmeet Singh is uh, aspiring to do her post graduation. Um, okay. Now, as a person who's done graduation in management and has three years of work ex into a part, partly creative field, can we still apply for MDES and not MA, considering that we still have the knowledge <coughs> that might be required? So, with a Bachelor's in management, can she do an MDES? Can she apply Is for that? A, I think it's like to like, no, Ramesh? No, it's like to and like in the sense that you have done uh, three years of management and then three years yeah, of work that's... experience. Also, your work experience, where is your work experience one? In, that in a creative field. So in a creative field. Of, sorry, there. Yeah, so she says it's a, it's in a partly creative field. Huh. So then your portfolio, in a way, what you have done matters, one. Secondly, straight away when you apply, people will say with your three-year management, you cannot do MDES, for, for sure. Only other way is to kind of go through the RPL mode, as, uh, as uh, Mike already suggested, to show that after the three years of degree, you had three years of ex work experience within the connected or creative field. You have to establish that connection. So for that, it's better if you write your admissions at Swisti Manipal, whichever the, uh, the email ID given in the admission page. And then it's better to talk to one-on-one -on -one with the person who is looking at the post-grad uh, post uh, admissions they will revert back to you soon. So just straight away, uh, send a mail with your, what you have done, three years of management is fine, but then what is that degree is called, where, which college, whether it's affiliated, all that. And then also give, give them a little bit of information about your three years of work experience. I'm sure they'll get back to you within, within this day. All right. Thanks. Uh, so, Meghna Shankar is asking, is the student exchange program also extended to the vocational course? The student exchange program at the moment is not, but we are trying to uh, work on getting inter uh, international partnerships with other vocational schools across the world. And that is something that probably we will try to realize this coming act academic year uh, at the moment because it is three years and within that three years already there is a lot of outbound uh, sort of learning because um, if you look at it in the second year you've got two to three months working as an apprentice in the outside world in a in a in an organization and your last semester your capstone project is also uh, based outside of the academy um, so it becomes difficult within that. So the, the amount of time for actual taught units is a little less. Of course, one is also learning when one goes and works in an organization. But there are certain areas that you need to sort of polish up and you need to have the, I would say, the, the comfort of the educational institute because um, it it's a it's the the learning space within a educational institute is much more secure than an, than the outside world the outside world you know uh, the odds are much higher in the sense that one has to perform to a certain level and that is expected of you whereas sometimes in the educational space inside the institute sometimes if you really you know bombard and make a really huge mess up 
it might be great learning you know it 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 might be much much more intense learning than playing it safe and doing a mediocre job so uh, basically to answer the, i mean I, I digressed a little but to answer the question uh, at the moment there is no uh, uh, exchange programs within the vocational program but it is definitely on the cards uh, we are already talking to one or two institutions in australia and uh, i hope this year it becomes a reality that we up our sort of exchange program into an international arena and also because we have tied up with manipal the possibilities that is one of the reasons also that we have uh, sort of come into the uh, as a constituent body of manipal uh, because manipal is a much larger uh, institution and university and therefore the connects that you can get uh, uh, and it's also a uh, 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 an institute of excellence so the, the the number of partnerships that you can build and the infrastructure that you can have uh, hopefully Sushti is moving into the uh, into another sort of era with with this new partnership and I think the campus that's going to come uh, in a year or two is definitely going to be quite state of the art. All right, thank you. Uh, right, so there is quite a few more questions, but I'm going to skip some well, due to lack of time. I mean, a lot of these questions which I'm going to skip, you've got the information on the website, so please go through the website um, in detail. But, but uh, yeah, so I'm just searching for questions which. Uh, there is, also, Leon, there is also a, a help desk where you can phone in and talk to people who can clarify either in terms of the admission process or in terms of each of the courses. If you go to each of the course pages, any across any level, uh, undergraduate, postgraduate, doctoral or any program, at the bottom of each landing page for each course at the bottom, you will have a contact email ID of a person who will be able to uh, give you uh, a lot of information which is very specific to that particular uh, uh, that particular course. And if it is something larger in terms of the program, then uh, you, you could write to admissions also or call into the help desk and they would connect you with us. Perfect. Um, a couple of questions here. Uh, the refund policy is that is that uh, do you all have a refund policy and is that there on the website as well? Yeah, the, the refund policy yeah, is yeah. on the website in complete in absolute detail, spelled out literally the A to Z of it. So if you change your mind quickly okay. enough, you can pretty much get a lot of your money back. Yeah. So that and it's explained. Yeah. It's it's completely. Scientific. All right. All right. It's in the admission page. There is a link called uh, refund policy. Refund policy. All right. Um, so Nikhil Lard is asking when when are you planning to conduct and finalize entrance related activities? Um, Nikhil, in the admission, you, you, admission uh, page, there is a timeline. Again, on yeah. the website, okay. there so, is a timeline for the next couple of months. Exactly how it pans out depending on the course, depending on undergrad, postgrad, and PhD. Very clearly delineated on the website. I think people can literally apply to courses by tomorrow. Uh, they might be connecting it to the application. So I think as Mike uh, said, or Nirat also specified, that it's good to go through the website and you may have just 15 days to apply, but still take a day or two to kind of go through the website look at uh, courses that you would like to apply if you want to ask any question as mike already pointed out there is a email id to which you can dash off your email and then you get an answer and then make up your mind and then apply by then your portal will be ready and i think you have time till 15th of june you don't have a big window i mean from now to 15th of june you just have 14 days so it's so it's uh, if you go to admission page 
lot of this information is there one thing to look at as my pointed out admission protocol second thing is admission timeline and then refund policy and also we have put out one page where what are we testing we are testing analytical reasoning critical thinking visualization imagination that page is also there so have a look at those pages and then make up your mind yeah just to add right. to that there's a beautiful schematic on the test the whole testing process how it pans out there's a it's diagram based to to make it very simple to explain how it works all right and uh, for the last question from opisha uh, if we apply for multiple courses in beders itself will the content of the test be different and on different dates no so if you apply to beders and bwalk you um, you will do two tests one in the am morning and one in the pm but if you apply to only bwalk you do only pm any number of courses and if you apply to only beders and bfa BDS BFA together four year program. If you apply to any number or four four courses within BFA and BDS, uh, you do only one test on day one and test two on day two. I think your question probably is coming from last year's pattern, and there has been a, so that is a change in our admission process this year. Uh, last year we had the first. the test one was a common first of all last year the test for the bwalk and the b b des and bfa were all one test this year the test for b des and bfa is the same and the test for bwalk is different within that also there is a change within the b des and bfa test uh test 1 last year test 1 was common to everybody and test 2 was according to certain admission clusters like moving image or design and innovation where there were three or four courses clustered and uh you if you so you ha sometimes had to write more than two test twos that is not there this year this year test 2 is also common to everyone so basically if you apply for b des or bfa on the first day morning you will have one test test 1 and on the second day of the test in the morning you will have test 2 if you apply for bders bfa and bwalk on the first day morning you will have the test for bders bfa in the afternoon you will have the test 1 for bwalk and on the second day morning you will have test for B, bders bfa and the second test for bwalk will be on the second day afternoon all right all right uh, that's good uh, last question that is coming from sairam um we all have a limited number of seats so is the is the does the website have to the information on the number of seats in the beta course there are set number of uh, seats for each course uh, we will put it out soon because we it just kind of we selected the website we worked the website we constructed it we, we we were busy putting that together today so there there are a set number of courses it's around 30 most of the courses i think there are 60 this is four year program in four year program most of the courses have uh, seats 30 seats uh, and visual communication and uh, industrial art and design has got 60 seats and we can't fill more than that in bwalk uh, can you tell me a uh, number of seats mike i think all of them are 30 except for graphic art and design if i remember That's right true. and yeah, and i yeah. think uh, uii is only 15 that's exactly the reason no. where uh, dion was mentioning that it's better to apply to round 1 yeah okay so i think um, thank you so much everyone here i think the team from uh, from uh, uh, shrishti has been extremely patient in 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 explaining the programs for everyone's understanding and and taking the time out to answer all the questions as much as possible 
the questions that I've not asked due to lack of time, they're all answered on the website. Uh, as mentioned by the faculty here, it is very important that you'll go through the website in absolute detail. Like Professor Mike says, get a cup of coffee, sit as long as you want and uh, and go through the website. That's the best way to get the most information. And if you hit a roadblock, there's always the helpline that you can connect with or the professors who are in charge of the program. Uh, you can connect it with them directly. So thank you all for joining in and asking your questions. Um, Sairam, thanks a lot uh, for your comment there and the appreciation of the session. Um, thank you, professors, for thank being here. Much. I'll be ending this. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you all the, all, all nice the participants you. and thanks, Dion, for you and for the DQ Lab. In fact, we had a great presentation from DQ Lab about how they are not just a training institute and how their, their work is much more than that. And we really appreciated uh, your initiative after your talk. And I, I think it was important to, for us to listen to all of you, Umesh and uh, Sean and you so that we could understand your initiative and it's really i mean that you guys are doing a great job thanks a lot yeah thank, thank you. you thank you so much thank, thanks dion thank you thank right. you thanks take care thank you take care bye-bye